Are you wondering if MTHFR and methylation can help with your digestive issues? Maybe you heard that having genetic alteration in MTHFR and treating MTHFR and providing methylfolate can sometimes help with motility and sometimes help with constipation. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to break down the myth from fact in terms of methylfolate and MTHFR's role in helping your digestion or potentially making it worse. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella. If you're getting a lot out of these videos, liking these videos, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. While I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of your health, they're not made for any specific individuals. So in this video, we're going to look at whether or not treating MTHFR and providing methylfolate can be a problem for your digestion or a potential solution. And a patient of mine recently came in thinking that her digestive problems were all related to her MTHFR gene alteration. She said that she had heard a podcast with Gary Brecka and that he stated that having MTHFR gene alteration slows down or cuts off your body's ability to move the contents through your digestive tract, inferring that there's some link here with constipation. Being someone that's very interested in MTHFR gene alteration and genetics in general, and being someone that spends a lot of time looking at and researching topics, I had never heard this before. And so I wanted to do a little research on my own to see if I can validate these claims or if there's any strong evidence for substantiating this claim. Spoiler alert, I didn't find any actual research on this topic, but I did find something interesting. And of course, after thinking this through, there is a theoretical reason that this may be true and evidence to substantiate or support this claim. But sometimes there's not actual research on things, even though they do work and have good sound reasons to try them. So what he was referencing in this video that I went and listened to was that not having methylfolate or not having a functional MTHFR enzyme is going to slow down your motility in the digestive tract. And there's actually several different types of motility in your digestive tract. There's the peristaltic movement, there's the migrating motor complex, and there may even be others, but those are the two main that I know of. And they're set in motion when we start eating, the stretch receptors get activated and cause contraction. And there's different pathways that get activated at different parts of the digestive tract through stretch receptors and other hormonal activities. And problems with these peristaltic or motility activation are thought to be at the heart of why some people do have chronic IBS. In fact, post-infectious IBS is thought to be related to damage to the nervous system so that it can no longer carry these functions out. But traditionally speaking, the activation and propagation of these signals throughout the nervous system, uh, in our brains, of course, throughout our bodies, but specifically in our guts, are occurring via, in some part, through neurotransmitter transduction or signaling. And one of these very important neurotransmitters for the gut in particular is serotonin. In fact, serotonin is said to be more abundant in our digestive tracts than it is in our brains. But how does this relate to MTHFR gene alteration or is it related at all? Well, one way that it could be related is that our bodies do need MTHFR in order to make methylfolate. And methylfolate allow us to make something called biopterin or recycle biopterin. And biopterin allows us to turn simple amino acids into neurotransmitters. So something like 5-HTP can turn into serotonin via biopterin. So while it's definitely true that MTHFR is needed in order to make methylfolate, which is needed in order to make serotonin properly, what's not clear is what will happen from taking methylfolate in terms of your bowel movements or IBS symptoms? Is there any research to substantiate this? Or is there any good reason to think that it will help? I think it's certainly interesting and why I wanted to look a little closer at it. And it's also somewhat plausible. But let's see if there's any actual research behind it. 
So in irritable bowel syndrome, particularly IBS with diarrhea, the research typically finds that there's an increased abundance or availability of serotonin. And there's oftentimes a reduced expression of the serotonin reuptake transporter. So basically there's an abundance of serotonin because the serotonin reuptake transporter isn't taking that serotonin out of the circulation. And this excess serotonin availability is thought to contribute to the symptoms of IBS diarrhea. So there's basically increased sensitivity in the gut from the higher amounts of serotonin, and that leads to increased bowel movements, increased contraction, increased motility. On the flip side, conditions like constipation type of IBS or IBS-C seems to involve inadequate amounts of serotonin release, which contributes to slower gut motility and constipation. Some of the primary treatments medication-wise for constipation include serotonin agonist or molecules that will enhance the activity of serotonin in specific areas. So specifically, there's one for 5-HT4 receptor agonists, and these help to alleviate constipation by promoting more serotonin release and thereby enhancing gut motility. So will taking methylfolate improve bowel movements and in particular improve IBS symptoms? Possibly if you have constipation or some sort of slow motility disorder, certainly makes a lot of sense. A lot of medications used to treat IBS-C are specific types of serotonin agonists, as we mentioned. So this comment definitely makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure if this was where he was going with that because he did not elaborate, but I couldn't find any evidence to support the role of methylfolate in constipation or motility disorders, specifically in terms of give methylfolate, measure the outcome. So further research would definitely be needed in order to substantiate this. But a decent portion of people with these types of symptoms may actually have something like post-infectious IBS, where they may have an overgrowth of bacteria in their digestive tract like SIBO and something like that, or other bacterial overgrowth situations. And people with these problems tend to get worse from taking methylfolate and other B vitamins. B vitamins have been known to act like growth factors for bacteria. So if you have an overgrowth of bacteria, giving B vitamins can certainly make that worse in some situations. It doesn't seem to do it for everyone, and I think the dose is going to be the determining factor, but I'm always cautious in my patients that already have digestive issues, super sensitive to a lot of foods or other digestive problems in giving them vitamins, uh, especially B vitamins that go directly through their digestive tract until I've ruled out that that's not the problem. So if they have some sort of bacterial overgrowth, or I think they do, then I will instead give them a sublingual form, which can work just fine. So in summary, is methylfolate a problem or a potential cure for someone with IBS type of constipation or constipation in general, I think it could have some potential curing effects or potential benefits there. And I'll definitely be keeping my eyes open in terms of the things that are happening in my patients that take methylfolate and have constipation. As far as I know from my research, I was not able to find any direct research papers on this, but doesn't mean that it's not something you can try and potentially get benefit from. But I would definitely be cautious if you do have a lot of digestive issues. I should mention too that I do have a book on MTHFR that goes into some of the nuanced things with taking methylfolate and some of the other supporting vitamins that are needed. And I also have a even more in-depth course that goes into some of the problems that people have when they're taking methylfolate and how you can optimize your methylation despite some of these issues. All right, that's all I had to say on this topic on MTHFR and digestion, or methylfolate and digestion. If you do have follow-up questions on anything that I covered here, drop those in the comment section. I'm happy to try and answer your questions. If you do have need for a more nuanced, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program where I can dedicate more time and attention to your questions.